Hi everyone, Sam here, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint an epic seascape. And the painting I'm about to show you features a breaking wave and stormy ocean and a rocky foreshore. And these are all great elements to include in a dramatic seascape painting. So throughout the video I'll explain some of the colours that I'm mixing and also the blocking in stage of the painting. Then I'll give you some specific tips on painting waves that make it look realistic and three-dimensional as well as painting the translucency of the water of the breaking wave and I'll also give you some tips on painting rocks. Then we'll end the painting by adding the final details that make it come to life. If you like this video be sure to hit the subscribe button below and if you want to see some of my latest art check out my Instagram profile I've also put a link below there as well and also there's a link below for the written notes that accompany this video so if you want to have a go at painting this feel free to copy the demonstration and feel free to use the photos it's all good anyway I hope you enjoy this video let's roll the tape I'm working on a 40 centimeter by 50 centimeter canvas and I've toned it with a layer of burnt umber just to add some vibrancy to the colors as it comes through the paint layers. Using a number one round brush I start sketching out the composition with titanium white mixed with a little bit of perylene crimson and then I'm using liquid original as my medium throughout the painting and this helps to thin out the paint and it also speeds up the drying so the painting is normally touch dry within 24 hours. I'll now just quickly go over the design behind the composition. One of the first things I decide when I'm going to paint a seascape is where is the horizon line going to go? In this case I've gone for a high horizon so I can make more of a feature of the breaking wave and the rocks in the foreground. One thing I would advise when painting a seascape is never have your horizon line in the middle. It forms a displeasing static and doesn't really make for a good composition. It can be quite distracting. In this painting I've made the breaking wave as the main focal area of the painting. And then I've incorporated an S composition where I've positioned the rocks to lead the eye towards the breaking wave. So the S composition really adds rhythm to the painting. The rocks in the foreground help anchor the scene and then I've painted a little island in the background just to add overall balance to the painting. I've painted this artwork using oils but you can use acrylics if you like as well. And the colours I'm using include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, perylene crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. I've used a range of brushes which mostly include flat brushes and dagger brushes but I'll put a list of the brushes in the written notes so if you just see the link below. In this painting there's two main areas of tone. We have the sky and then the rest of the painting is filled up with the sea and the rocks which takes up most of the painting. My darkest and lightest values can be found in the foreground and in the sea and the sky in general is light in value. Now value refers to how light or dark a colour is and you can clearly see this in one of the reference photos that I used for this painting. I'm going to start painting the sky first as I'm going to use this to gauge the overall tonality of the painting. And when I'm blocking in a painting I always try and use as big a brushes as I can get away with. This not only gives the painting a more painterly feel but it also allows me to cover ground quickly. I'm not at all concerned with detail during the blocking in phase. I just want to get that information down so that I've got base to work from once the painting's dry. And then when it is dry, I can use smaller brushes as I build up the detail later on in the painting. Using a number 10 flat brush, I start painting the highlights of the clouds. And I'm using titanium white with a bit of burnt sienna and a tiny amount of yellow oxide mixed in. Next, I start painting the cloud shadows 
and this is a combination of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, perylene crimson and titanium white to lighten the value. These colours are brilliant for painting clouds. The burnt sienna is a natural dark orange which is the opposite to blue on the colour wheel so they neutralise each other. This allows you to create some organic looking greys that you get in clouds. And then by adding the perylene crimson, which you'll only need a tiny amount, it gives the clouds a violet tint. I paint the sky with a combination of ultramarine blue, a very small amount of phthalo green and a lot of titanium white. And then I move on to the island in the distance which is one of the anchor points of my composition. I'm using my cloud shadow mix but with a bit less titanium white which will darken the value. Using a number 8 flat brush I paint the horizon line of the sea and I pretty much do this in one or two sweeping brush strokes. And I mix the colour of the sea with a combination of ultramarine blue a little yellow oxide and some titanium white. I established the translucency of the wave from the get-go and using a number 8 brush I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some phthalo green and titanium white. I then mix the colours for the main body of the breaking wave which is incidentally in shadow and I use a combination of ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide and a little phthalo green. I then blend this in with the translucent area of the wave. Next I start working on the highlights of the waves and white water which are in full sun. And here I'm using a combination of titanium white with a little ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and perylene crimson mixed in. And this just darkens the value of the white so it's not completely white. The reason I'm doing this is so that later on in the painting I can start adding lighter layers of tone which will add to the three dimensional effect of the water. The breaking waves in this painting are backlit, which in my opinion always makes for a more dramatic seascape as you have that sharp contrast between the highlighted areas and the areas that are in shadow. I start painting in the shadows of the breaking wave and foam and white water. And here I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue with some perylene crimson and titanium white. In general, I try and keep my colour combinations as simple as possible so that I can achieve some cleaner colour. I move on to the rock shadows and these are the darkest values in the painting so I start by using a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna which creates a near black. For the rock shadows in the midground, I just lighten the value slightly by adding a tiny amount of titanium white to my mixture. And it's here in the foreground that you'll find your darkest darks and your lightest lights. Next, I start painting the areas of the rocks that are in light. And I start with a combination of yellow oxide and burnt sienna with titanium white. And then I also mix in a little bit of ultramarine blue. The natural colour of the rocks are not particularly saturated, so using earth colours such as burnt sienna or yellow oxide are ideal for painting rock colours. In general the colours that I used for the rocks included mostly burnt sienna, yellow oxide and ultramarine blue which I varied in different combinations to create different colours and textures. If I wanted to increase the saturation of the colour of the rocks a little, I just added in a tiny amount of cadmium yellow and cadmium red, but I really only reserved this for the rocks in the very foreground. I paint the reflected light on the rocks with a combination of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and perylene crimson, but I make the mixture more blue. And again, I can lighten the value by adding some titanium white if I need to. The 
The blocking in stage is now complete and I've allowed my painting to dry. As I'm beginning to start building up the detail, I can start reducing my brush sizes. I begin working on the clouds and start refining the shapes and forms. I'm using a combination of titanium white with a bit of yellow oxide and burnt sienna, but making the value lighter than the previous layer. Using a number 6 flat brush, I start working on the cloud shadows. I define the bases of the clouds, and I'm using the same colours that I used in the blocking in stage. After finishing up with the clouds, I jump straight into the highlights of the breaking wave and the foam and white water in the sea. So I'm still using a combination of titanium white, but this time with a little less ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and perylene crimson, so the value is lighter than my previous layer. And you can already see on the painting that it's starting to jump out, yet it's still not completely white. By building up lighter layers with each pass, it creates a more three-dimensional look in the water. I use a number two flat brush to paint the highlights and the foam patterns in the water in the foreground. And then after that I move on to the shadows in the breaking waves and the white water. Now here I'm using a number six flat brush and I'm using the same colours that I used in the blocking in stage. All the while I'm applying lighter tone in order to create that three dimensional effect. Next I turn my attention back to the breaking wave and the translucent water inside it. This is always one of my favourite parts of painting a seascape because you can create some really dramatic effects with the translucent water. So here I'm using the same colours that I used in the blocking in stage but I'm just refining the translucency of the water and even adding lighter colour just to give the illusion of turbulent water in the breaking wave. I start refining the main body of the wave with my shadow mix and then I use that exact same colour to create the illusion that the wave is curling over, dragging my brush in a downward motion. Using a number two flat brush I start building up the detail on the rock on the right hand side of the painting. It's kind of glistening in the night where the water has splashed against it, so I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and a lot of titanium white. This gives the illusion of wet rocks, but it also helps to define the form of the rocks as well. You'll notice in the bottom left hand corner my colour study, which I did before I started this painting. It's a small version of the painting that I'm doing now. And whilst it's not essential, it's always worth doing a colour study before you do a big painting, just because you can make your mistakes on a smaller painting and easily make corrections, and you can also see where it's going to go. It's much harder to correct mistakes on a larger painting, and it can be pretty frustrating. So as I said, whilst colour studies aren't essential, I would always recommend you at least do some sketches in your sketchbook to plan the composition before getting into a large painting. Using a number two flat brush, I paint the reflected light on the rocks on the left hand side. And as with the blocking in stage, I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna, perylene crimson and some titanium white to lighten the value. This also gives the illusion of wet rocks. Next I mix a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to create a near black and using a number two filbert brush 
I start painting in the cracks on the rocks in the very foreground on the right hand side. I then use this as a base to build up the form of the rocks and then I mix a varying combination of yellow oxide, burnt sienna, some ultramarine blue and titanium white to create the textured surface of the rock that is in light. I use a number 2 filbert brush to create the foam patterns on the breaking wave. I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue with some perylene crimson and titanium white and I paint the foam patterns in the direction that the wave is breaking, generally in a downward motion, twisting the brush in order to create some spidery looking foam patterns. Next I start adding more detail to the highlights on the breaking wave and the foam in the foreground. Again I'm using titanium white but I'm still mixing in a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and a bit of perylene crimson, but much less so that the value is lighter than the previous layer. I'll be saving the pure white and my lightest values till the very end of the painting. I also use the same mixture to form the highlights of the ripples in the white water in the foreground. By now the painting is really starting to come together and using a number 2 flat brush I paint some reflected light in the breaking wave and then I turn my attention to the rocks in the foreground. Using a dagger brush with a combination of titanium white with a small amount of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, I paint the highlights of the rocks that are glistening in the direct sunlight. This not only helps to give the illusion that the rocks are wet, but it also helps to define the shapes of the rocks. At this stage of the painting I'm now starting to refine it more and add finer details and I can see the end in sight. I add some more highlight to the rocks in the foreground by mixing in a little bit of cadmium yellow and cadmium red to my existing mixture which just helps to increase the saturation a little bit. It also helps to give the rocks the textured surface. I spend some time adding more detail to the white water and foam in the foreground and I define the breaking waves. I then paint some reflected light in the rocks in the foreground, adding a bit of heat by mixing in ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, perylene crimson and a tiny amount of cadmium red. I'm now adding final detail to this seascape painting and using a number 6 flat brush and a mixture of titanium white with a small amount of yellow oxide I start dry brushing some spray above the breaking wave which helps to make the wave glow. I do the same with the foam and the breaking wave in the foreground and this is a cool little trick you can use in seascape paintings. I save my lightest values till the end of the painting and now I'm just using titanium white with a small amount of yellow oxide mix in and I just paint the highlights on top of the ripples and small waves in the foreground. I'm now adding my lightest values to the breaking wave and the foam in the foreground and this is really making it come to life. I add more highlights to the foam patterns in the foreground and then I've allowed my painting to dry again before adding a bit more sea spray just to the breaking waves and white water in the foreground. I just dry brush it on but I'm careful not to add too much as titanium white is opaque and I don't want to risk my painting looking chalky. I finish up the painting by adding final highlights to the sea and white water and to the rocks in the foreground. I'll now just quickly go over some of the points that I've covered in this video. So 
So I blocked in this painting in one sitting and I used as large a brushes as I could get away with. So this not only achieves a more painterly effect but it allows me to cover ground more quickly. The breaking waves in this seascape are backlit which actually, in my opinion, creates the most dramatic seascapes and also is easiest to paint as you have that sharp contrast between the highlighted areas of the wave and the areas in shadow. I painted the translucent area of the breaking wave from the get-go and then just add some refinements later on in the painting by blending in my shadow mix to the translucent area. I built up the layers in the white water by making sure each layer wasn't completely white. Then I built up successive layers with each layer becoming lighter in value. I used the same approach for the areas in light that I painted on the rocks. And finally, as always, I saved my lightest values until the end of the painting. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any comments or questions about painting seascapes, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you want to see some of my latest paintings, check out my Instagram profile and I'm also on Facebook as well. Anyway, happy painting. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye.